Easy guys, how's it going? It's Oscar here, back with another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys the importance of using velocity in your tracks and how it can help provide groove, you know, a sense of like movement dynamically, which is essentially what it is, velocity, and um, you know, how it can help your, mainly your drums and your bass lines, anything that's like got a lot of energy. Before we go into like what we're doing here, let's jump in. Okay, so we're here in live and I'm just going to play the track. I thought um, a dub track would probably be a good idea to do this over because with real instruments it sounds, um, I don't know, a little bit more noticeable, a little bit more familiar. But when you use electronic samples it's kind of difficult to separate the two but everyone's heard a lot of acoustic music before so this should be quite easy to figure out. So right here I've got a, I've got two versions of Addictive Drums which is an acoustic drum kit and one of them is playing with the velocity changes and one is playing without the velocity change so it's like it's just static and everything's hitting at the same time so I'll play the one that's in the recording and then the one that's not. a little bit louder then and then this is the one without Here what we've got is just um is just all the velocity settings for everything. So in here, everything's just sitting at like the standard like six or like nine seat-ish area where you sort of defaults notes. And you can hear it's just really robotic and it just keeps it's almost like it has this machine gun sounding effect. Especially play pay attention to the kicks and then the hats in this section here. So if we listen to the kicks, so this is the non-dynamic one. And then this is the one with the velocity. And I want you to hear, so that, hear this hi-hat roll here. So this is the non-dynamic, I mean the dynamic one. Maybe what I'll do is I'll accentuate those ones on the downbeat a little bit more. All of these things are, you know, relatively, and they seem really minute, but the thing that you need to sort of think about when you're making music like this that is designed for sound systems is that these minute changes are going to be played at the sound of a jumbo jet taking off pretty much with a discrepancy of like a couple db yeah there's going to be a drastic change in um in the volume but that like, you're going to notice you know outside of just your headphones because there's only a certain level that you can listen to on your headphones but that level is multiplied probably by about 50 that's coming out of a massive sound system so to have those little nuances in there really makes your music in a live setting sound more live. <laughs> and um, I've got an example here with the bass line. So. And it's mainly on these like repeating notes. Yeah, uh, there must be a, a little bit of processing change here and there as well. Yeah, so 
let's copy that one over because I think that one sounded better. So yeah, again, really minute, really minute differences, but um, ha having those sounds accentuated just really fl fluffs up the mix a little bit, makes it breathe a little more. Uh, having everything just machine gunning you in the face the whole time, it, especially every element, you know, it's, it's just, it gets a bit much. I don't know if you've ever been making a tune and you listen to an 8 or 16 bar loop that you've made and you're just like... Okay, I'm listening to it. You listen to it for a little bit, and you're just like, "This is," you know. You start off making the idea, and you're like, "This is all right," and then you get a few, you know, you get a couple hours into like tweaking some little bits, and then you're just like, "It's signs of you know, this drum loop or something. There's something about it that's just driving me mad." Nine times out of ten, it's because your velocities aren't set to either random or different. You know, they're differing. So there's a number of ways you can do this in Live Eleven. You know, you can obviously draw and you know, move these in manually to to decide where you want to put them. But what's great about Live 11 now is these velocity ranges. So you can see that when I'm when I bring this down or up, uh, basically whenever that note hits, it will land somewhere within that gray box, gray box's value. By by these like randomized randomization options and the velocity range options, it really creates a sense that like someone is playing everything in live. Especially with drums, it's amazing because you can just like uh, draw in a hi hat loop, something like that. Um, if, if I could draw in a straight line, I would, but you know what I mean? If you draw a straight line and then you can just set that to random if you want like totally random playing, but like on a 16th and you don't really care about what one's being emphasized on the downbeat or anything like that. If you just want it rolling, that's a really cool, quick trick rather than having to do the old way that I used to do, which was just drawing it in like that. Doing that just didn't feel right because it kept looping at the same rate, whereas with this randomization option, every time it loops, it will loop and potentially land in a slightly different place, therefore creating, you know, making it random. So, yeah, what else is the... I think that's it. Alright, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you want to hit the like button, that'd help me out a lot. Uh, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you got anything out of this video, leave, uh, you know, leave me a comment saying that you did or say that you didn't. Any, any future video suggestions would be great please leave them down below. Any questions or anything, I'll try and get back to them all. Go ahead into the description of this video. There's a, there's a link tree link. And in there you can find my Discord and you know, feel free to join. There's a few videos in there, you know, little gifts and stuff. But I've, I've left a um, lives rack folder in there, in the plugin section. There's a bunch of free plugins and you know people have suggested stuff in the past as well. Uh, it's one of the pinned comments in there. So feel free to go in and grab that. So on my Patreon as well, I'll be uploading a mixing, a mixing course over the next few weeks, which will be a start to finish, you know, seeing my entire process of mixing down tracks. So if you guys want to head over there and check that out, um, yeah, that'd be great. Because <laughs> it helps support me and the channel making these videos. And the more people that sign up there means the more time I can put into doing this. So yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.